Hello everybody. On this episode I'm going to show you how to make a banner pole and a banner and then I'll be giving away the one that I'm making as well. So this one at the moment is our banner pole and um, that we use in game. Total length of the flag is width 56 centimeters. The total length of the flag about 80. So what I'll be doing is basically replicating this and this shape. I'm going to keep this because it sits quite nice. Show you guys how to make it. This also just to attach. We've got this as the centre pole. And we'll use you literally just slide it through. And slide it through. You find a nice centre point there. And then this literally just has a cup hook on it. Which clips onto it nice and solid. The bit of leather around the top as well just gives it a bit more grip. Um, there is a tie on the back of this. Just the top of the flapping round in the wind. And then we do a single knot like that. The good thing about this design as well is it's not completely fixed, so if you do catch anything with it, it is quite likely just to ping out, which is nice and safe. So if you do accidentally catch a tree or catch someone with it, you're not going to do too much damage. So I'll be showing you how to make something like this. I'll also be making one as well for a giveaway, um, which I'll list the details of that at the end. And um, what you need to do, let's get started. So to begin with, I'm essentially going to use all the exact same measurements to make the same one again. So what we need to do is find a nice piece of dowling. Um, this is dowling that I just got from um, home base, 2 meters 40 long by 35 mil thick, so just over an inch thick, it's nice and strong, it's nice and sturdy as well, it is pine, um, I do like pine when it comes to these because when you do scorch it, um, you bring out all the detail in the wood and it looks amazing. What you need to do as well is when you get it, just hold it up and look down the very end and you can see how bent they are. Normally when they store them, they stack them upright but lend against something which means you do get a bend. The main bend in this one is at this point, so it goes fairly straight and then kinks this knot here. So what we'll probably do is use that, that knot as our, as our cut point. So this will be the sideways piece and the remainder will be the upright. So if you measure across here, the length of this bit of wood is 61 centimetres. That's nice and awkward. Mung that down there and it does land actually almost exactly on the knot, which is great. So you take this outside and just cut it there. And that is basically all the cutting you'll need to do. Back in a minute. Okay, so we've got our two pieces of wood here. Um, always remember to remove the sticker. Right. Now what you want to do on the edges on this is just round them off. What you can do is literally just scrape it on the edge. Look at that, just rounds the edge off. Right, so what we're going to do now we need to make sure that our cup hooks fit, which is something that I have not actually checked yet. So this could be interesting. What you also need to do before you move any further is find the centre of your piece of wood. So as I can't remember what width it was, 62, so we're looking at 31. So roughly about there. This that's our centre line, hot like the hell. Now we get to bust out the fun toy. Now I like um, burnt wood, I like how it looks, um, I think it just adds another layer to the um, to the thing itself. So if you just get it, just run it over the top, and yeah, as you can see, you don't even need to put it on there for long, but it just brings out all of that really nice colour in the grain. This can take a while, but I always think it's definitely worth it. Okay, so we've got all these burnt up now. I'm just going to let them cool down. Again, I've done one of the ends, which would be this one. Just because this is going to be the top end, the other end I'm actually going to cover with a cap, just like the bottom on the other one. But as you can see, it just it literally just brings out all of the detail in the wood. And it means you don't really have to detail it, let the wood do the work for you. I've also got this cotton material, which is really, really nice. Cost about £4.50 a metre by a metre and a half, which is dead cheap by today's standards for material. I'm going to be lazy and just draw around my existing one. So 
so there we go we've got that shape there we also just need to extend these out twice as far obviously these are folded over once and just sewed at the bottom once again because i have no ruler because i'm an adult i will be using an angling water belt this line across here just so we know where to sew this line across here just so we know where to sew mark how long that is like that and just extend it outwards so it's all very very complicated very complicated such complex and top line obviously I'm not going to be painting this because I don't know who's going to win it so I'm going to leave it blank um, and probably try to get the most neutral colour as possible but should be nice and easy for you to be able to do something. I will hem around the outsides um, in a black just because I think it, it brings it to life. It almost creates like a, a border for it and it's quite nice. So I'm just going to cut this out and then I will use the sewing machine to hem all around the outsides and do it so it can loop over. Okay, so there we have our complete shape, and now I will just hem all the way around the outside um, in a zigzag pattern, just like this one, which again, looks quite nice, holds the edges together so it won't just fray and fall apart. Sewing! Okay, right, so we've got the stitching all the way around the outside now, again, just over the edge, just enough to nip it in. Um, but still holds it in place all the way up and along and back down as one stitch Then end it do the inside of the H instead of the H inside of the arch Sorry as another then what we'll do is we've got our lines on the other side Like this and you take this piece you match it up with the lines and You just do that stitch again. I don't know what stitch it is. It's like a number 10 on this, which is a Genome Decor Computer Delta Charlie 3050, um, it's that one, the one with the red flashing dot on it, a number 10, zigzag stitch. Okay, so we've got all that finished now, I'm seeing a nice, uh, nice shield shape flag, banner. Annoyingly it did drop a couple of stitches, but there's nothing I can really do about that now. So what we're going to do now is go back onto the main pole and work out the height for attaching the clip wrap the clip and start work on hand stuff. Okay, so here we have um, the top part of the banner. Um, I don't like to put them right at the very top because if it splits you don't have any way of wrapping it. So I like to keep it down a little bit. That way when you're putting the screws in, if it does split, you can bind the top and it just holds it in place a little bit better. So grab your Sharpie, make sure your lines are upright. Mark two holes for where normal people would drill. However, because I never have the appropriate tools for the job, I don't have a drill. All I have is a file. So, because I'm a genius, I'm just gonna quickly hold this in place on my leg and just kind of roughly drill these out with my hands like I'm starting a fire. That'll do. Proof again, you don't need tools, you just need ingenuity. And because this is for someone else as well, I like to try and make sure that the screws actually match. Also, don't have a power drill, because that's at my parents' house. Again, I don't have the right tools. But when has that ever stopped me? Again, if ever Winters ever wants to swap over um, the banner pole, I mean the, um, the cross piece that goes across, you can always just unscrew these and fit in another cup hook that does actually fit your cross beam in better. There we go, that's in there nice and tight. What we want to do now is we want to mask that because we don't really want to see this. So grab some black leather, just like this. I don't know what this was for, but it's mine now. And I'm using it for something else. So let's get a ruler. And by ruler, I mean a piece of paper. Just fold it so that it fits in, not that far. We want something like that thickness. A little bit wider. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. Something that thick. So that's the thickness that we want. 
And basically we want something just to go in here that we can wrap around and it will mask that base. So ideally about that long. Oh my god, it's almost perfect. Right. So that is what we need. Here we go. That's our strip. It's got a little bit of chalk on it, but that just rub off. And I'll make sure that sticks all the way around. I like to use my old friend's double-sided cello tape. Whack that on the inside. This have to be straight, this have to be neat, no one's gonna see it. Find the middle point and just kind of offer it up just to see where the join would be. So I want the join on this to be almost exactly in the back. So bring that in a little bit further. So that'll be perfect. Cool. And start from the middle, just over the top of the screws. Once that's down, really pull it as far as you can. Stretch the leather out. Because again, it's just another layer of something that will help hold that and stop it from shaking. I also normally put two little nails through there just for aesthetics because there's no way that it would just hold in place like that. Um, also, it just secures it properly. For this one, what I'm actually going to use is just thumbtacks. They will work exactly the same, absolutely no problem. So my SD filled up, sorry about that. But yeah, with them popped in, just with some thumbtacks, which again aren't really doing the work. That's what that looks like. And that now will clip onto this quite nicely. To sort the problem out with the wobble, all you do is pop that away, grab another piece of leather. There we go. Remember to always cut on the inside of the lines you draw as well. Don't forget that. That's an important thing. When you're drawing up against something, you don't want the edge that is the outside one because that's not the controlled line. You always want to cut against the inside of a line because that's the bit that was up against something and therefore is restricted. So that will be your correct size. There we go, so this is the bit we want. Again, double-sided tape. Going on here, don't really need any in the middle, but don't want to waste any more. Pop that stuff at the end, pop it over your centre, just like normal, and yeah, just pull it out as tightly as possible, just like that. There we go. Once again, grab a pin. This now, because it's thicker, it'll grip a lot better. There we go. Nice and strong. Now what I've done on this one is, just so it can't slip off sideways, because obviously it isn't a raised piece, I've used some um, power cord wrap that around and it just kind of stops it and creates a little buffer. Okay, so we've now got, let me just turn the fan off. We've now got this wrapped in twine, um, a simple kind of power cord adapted style. So you start with the power cord end here, bring it out. I normally hammer a nail in and then pull it round and then wrap it over itself. Then the end ends up nice and covered. And once you get to a point, hammer a nail in there, yank it across at right angle, another nail, yank it all the way down, wrap it up, tie it off, and then I prefer a screw to a nail. This is quite a lot of tension on this end bit here, but again, this will not be seen. This will be at the back side here. And that will sit like this and looks quite nice, actually. Might swap some of the rope over from my one, to be honest. So we've got that there. That's now the top. That is nice and sturdy, but again, not too sturdy, so that if someone does catch it, it will literally just ping off and cause no real damage you're not going to take someone's head off with it so on my one because it stands around a lot because ours goes into battle a bit um i created this boot um the boot basically allows it to sit on the ground without letting all the water go up and into the wood because obviously the wood is not treated up to you if you want to treat it um, but i i don't like to treat the wood so i'm going to create the boot now and i will show you how to do that how far up do you want the boot to go i like mine to be quite shallow so I would probably say about five centimetres, measure to the inside of the end of the bit of wood, roughly, I'd say seven. So seven centimetres in total, so you're looking for something that's about 14 centimetres in width. What have I got laying around? This popcorn bucket. That's roughly, it's like 13, that'll do. Grab a bit of leather. Right, so we've got some black. Again, trying to, nope, that's pleather. That won't work. Don't use pleather. It breaks and falls off. Okay, some actually black leather from a huge sheet that I've literally got from a bin. So draw around the base of this with your Sharpie. Once again, cut it out. Fold it 
find roughly the middle, which you can easily do just by folding it into quarters. Just giving it a really firm press at the point. That will roughly show you where it is. So there, what we want to do is yet more cellar tape. Bung a little patch in the middle. I'll just hold that in place for us while we start doing this bit. Because we just find out roughly how far up it comes. Wrap just a bit around. Again, doesn't have to be neat. So bring up one side in place. Go on the other. Bring up that side. Make sure you've got even amounts each side. Go like that. And then fold the other one in. So you should have kind of a bit like a, a bit like a really shit flower effect. Then what you need to do is go right up to one of the edges so you'll feel it and it won't want to lift up any more when you press it this way because obviously it, it sticks down. Find that point and just fold it back. Once again, I will be using push pins, not push pins, pins, I guess they're called. Let me know what else you would call it. This will be quite difficult because you are going through three pieces of leather. But you can get that. There we go, just like that. And then just repeat all the way around. Okay, so that is then done. Remove the remainder of your pins before you put your hand on. But yeah, that is essentially your pole. That is the minimum that I would probably say to have. So you've got your boots so that you don't get water up all on the inside and it starts to rot. And you've got your clip at the top. Now I'm going to do a bit of hand wrapping on this as well, just so you've got the areas. Like I've got on this one here. Ow. Like I've got on here, just some nice comfortable areas to hold. Um, these little bits of detail as well. One of those actually stands for each member of our group that's died on the field. So again, you can add nice little touches like that if you really want. I have also got for if I go to different systems because filming at Empire is prohibited, a GoPro attachment at the top of mine, bolted on. Um, that's the other way that I used to do with just any old nails. But you can basically do whatever you want to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add in some more details to this, the giveaway one. Um, and I'll show you when it's finished and tell you how you can win it free okay i realize that a lot of people don't actually know how to power cord wrap um so a quick way to tell you how to do it is you get your end here make sure there's enough here to probably create a little loop um then you run it up to where you want it to go leave enough that it'll peek around come back down and then right angle it and wrap it round. so you've got essentially it goes up and back under and then comes back out at this point here the reason for that is once you've got round and done all all that you've got to obviously you've got an end sticking up you loop it through here and then pull this really hard and it'll pull that end in underneath this binding and then you trim this edge here and then you have no edges on it. I'll show you better when I get to the end. Right, so we've got to the end of where we're doing, so we're fully wrapping that up now. So what you need to do is grab your scissors, cut a fair amount off, not a huge amount, but still a decent excess. So we've got that there, this thing gets fed through this loop, okay, with me, and we should, we, nah, I fucked it. You should just pull this and then that will come through. But that isn't gonna work now, so what I will do <laughs> instead is tie this off and pin it in place. But that's how it should work. No, I don't know, I don't even work it. Okay, so it's now the day after. Um, I got distracted by oh, Fury. A quick thing to note about this uh, this flag build, if you are allergic to cats, it does obviously come from a house with cats, doesn't it Fury? Hey. There are cats in this house. Isn't that right, Drake? So we've got it at the moment that it's obviously got the little cup on the bottom. It's got a wrap here. I'll trim this piece off in a minute so it's not hanging down. We've got a nice little hand wrap there as well for a secondary grip point. Um, it goes all the way up obviously into that. Now, um, when this unwraps and clips in there and hangs down, what I will do is provide a little loop that you will just sew um, in the middle somewhere. Don't worry, that's just the scrubbiness from it being against something that's been burnt. There'll be a little loop when you attach it. Doing all this one hand now. Um, that'll obviously clip into the top. 
And to stop this literally just flapping up like that, you sew a little loop of material, material, rope, to the back side of this, literally just a couple of stitches through, and then that ties behind here when you've got it up there. So even if it does um, get hit with the wind, it'll just billow, but not pull completely away. So I have been struggling trying to think of an actual competition to do for this. So I think I'm just going to go with something that's very, very close to home, which is in the comment section below, let me know what your favourite cake is. Nice and simple. I like cake. Everybody likes cake. And those who don't like cake can't be trusted. So we're going to go with that. Leave, a, leave your favourite cake in the comment section down below. So I'll pick someone down below with a nice cake that they've chosen. Um, and I will do another video or possibly post it on Instagram or Twitter. I will actually do it this time. And again, we'll arrange how to, how to transfer this over at E3. You need to be at Empire Event 3 and you also need to be subscribed to do those things because I like to watch that number go up. But it's pretty fun. Oh, that's my stomach. I'm going to go and have something to eat because, like, because it's 9.04. It's hot dogs. And I'm an adult. Peace out.